So there's a very simple relationship between delta G standard for a reaction and the equilibrium constant for that reaction. That's fortunate because we saw earlier that we can very easily calculate values for delta G standard. So if we could somehow use those to calculate the equilibrium constant, we could then calculate the equilibrium composition of, of, uh, of a mixture, of reaction mixture. So let's see how we can do that. So this equation tells us that if we take our standard Gibbs energy, so that's remember the difference in Gibbs energy between pure products and reactants, and then include this term, which accounts for the entropy of mixing, depending on what composition we have. Remember, this is products over reactants. So it tells us, you know, this is a, this is a measure of how much the uh, entropy of mixing there is. But if we add these terms together, we can get the actual delta G for a particular reaction mixture at a particular composition. So this tells us for a given beaker with whatever things are mixed in it, is the reaction going to go forward, a delta G of that's negative, or backwards, a delta G that is positive. So this tells us whether something's spontaneous, and this tells us uh, what's the energy difference between the products and reactants. So let's look what happens to this equation when we say that we're at equilibrium. So what if we're at equilibrium? At equilibrium, we know two things. First of all, we know Q is equal to K equilibrium. Right? Remember, Q So K equilibrium is just the value of Q when we're at equilibrium. But we also know that delta G is equal to zero. It must be equal to zero because if delta G is not equal to zero, we're not at equilibrium. We're either going to be spontaneous forward or spontaneous backwards, right? So both of these things have to be true if we're at equilibrium. So let's go ahead and apply equilibrium conditions. So our delta G is now equal to zero. So we're just rewriting the equation above, but we're writing it at equilibrium. And we can just uh, solve this for delta G standard. We can see delta G standard is going to be equal to negative RT log of k equilibrium. This is a great equation because it allows us to go back and forth between thermodynamic values and the equilibrium constant, which is really great for determining the equilibrium uh, concentration and reaction mixture. So uh, very useful equation. OK, so in this example, we've got a reaction where delta G standard is a positive 4.7 kilojoules per mole. Let's find K. What's the value of K equilibrium for this reaction? And this number is at 25 degrees C, so we're going to find this at 25 degrees C. Okay, so that's our problem statement. We see that we want this, we have this, so we write the equation relating them. Delta G standard is equal to negative RT log of K. We solve this for K. So we divide both sides by negative RT, and then take the exponential to get rid of the logarithm. OK, so you can see we divide it by a negative RT, and then take an exponential. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to be careful here to always use Kelvins and to convert this back to joules from kilojoules. So we have a negative 4,700 joules per mole divided by 298 kelvins times r and since we're working in joules we want 8.314 joules per mole per kelvin so we can see our kelvins cancel our kelvins our moles cancel our moles and our joules cancel our joules. And we have to have this be unitless since we're about to take an exponential. OK, so this comes out to a k equilibrium of 0 
0.15. And we know that K equilibrium uh, smaller than one means it's a reaction where we're going to end up with more reactants than products. In other words, it's an unfavorable equilibrium, at least at this temperature. Delta G standard of that's a positive number means that you're going to have an equilibrium constant that's small, in other words, smaller than, than one. 